Hello and welcome back to my Factorio 1.0 tutorial series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again guys. Uh, we are about where we left off. However, uh, some very astute folks may notice that there is a slight difference in this red circuit build. Uh, what I'm about to mention I say just for transparency and because I think it's uh, pretty funny and, and a good warning to everyone. Uh, I had a little bit of an accident earlier today and I accidentally <laughs> Uh, saved over this save which is it's yikes right it's um it was really bad luckily we had uh, we had I think two auto saves on this map uh, but one of them was a bit more recent than the other one of them was about as recent as me placing this first cable machine or, or maybe it was a cable and then a couple of these and uh, and that's where we were. So I just had to rebuild this. No big deal. Thank goodness we had that auto save. Otherwise, it would have been really bad. Uh, so I just, for some, I, I didn't remember exactly how I'd done it, and I was kind of in a rush trying to get this done before I streamed. Uh, so that is a little bit different. We'll probably make it nicer here uh, in, in the future. But just to point that out. I didn't <laughs> change this uh, just you know on a whim. And uh, so, so that just really quickly, I just you know want to say that. Uh, when you make a save, be very careful. Now, it does bring up in my 1.0 overview video, um, in 18, oh, 0.18 overview video, I, I discussed that it does bring up a, uh, like a kind of a, a warning box for you, like it, if you actually want to do this. So if I go to save this, well, okay, apparently it, <laughs> apparently it doesn't. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't. Sometimes it does and then sometimes it doesn't I did it in a multiplayer game So I like saved the map from the multiplayer and it didn't bring up a confirmation box just like it does didn't there um, even though it should um, I think it's because uh, it, it only does it if your if the map you're saving over has more play time Than the one you're, you're currently on uh, is why it didn't uh, I think it should just do it always because I still had an accident there. So I just wanted to mention that. So today what we're going to do is we're going to add, I think we need to add power poles to our hub here. Uh, I think also it would be good to uh, just add on this second side of the red circuits and we can maybe start actually heading towards uh, purple science here would maybe be a good bet. We actually, some people may be wondering about the rest of oil production, batteries and such, uh, but we don't actually need those yet. And we, we don't really need to spend the time to set them up quite yet But if we if we click so you can click on researches and uh, It will show you well a tree it's a tech tree It'll show you how you get there it can be kind of overwhelming, but you you can kind of follow the lines and it, it well it highlights all the lines um, But like as we go farther up you can see it's highlighting just the ones that this requires and the ones that it unlocks so uh, also, uh, ones in green are ones you've completed, ones in this yellowish orange are ones you can get but haven't, and the ones in red are ones you just can't get uh, because they're prerequisites. In this case, these three are not complete. Uh, so we need to get this so we can get that. Uh, and then uh, one really nice hotkey, this is actually new in uh, 1.0 and I th this is the first time I'm trying it. Uh, is I just hit backspace there, so a fantastic hotkey the devs have added uh, in the tech tree is if you, uh, you know, click on a research like this one. I, I'm queuing it up, but then I could just click here. Sometimes it's not that easy. Uh, I can just hit backspace and it'll take me back to the one I was selected on, which is really, really nice. Um, so we'll just queue up all of these right here and get those going. And then let's come down here and create some power poles for ourselves. So uh, we don't need these small ones anymore. They are just, you know, they're kind of old age stuff. We want these medium ones. Now we have everything we need to make this. We do have steel and copper and then the iron for the iron sticks. Unfortunately though, this is why I usually take a long time to actually get them set up. Uh, primarily because I haven't usually brought steel and gears or sorry and copper to my hub section so that is usually why but what we can do here is uh, just I'm just making this up as I go as as I tend to do uh, we're going to do this now I'm not going to do a pass through like this because what this is going to be is the sticks 
for the power poles and there's no reason really at all to store the sticks in a box so there's no need to do this sort of pass through of course it does throw off our you know kind of lineup here but we've already passed that a little bit there uh, so there's just no reason to do a pass through like that uh, what we can do though is put a uh, belt here that is copper and steel and I think that'll actually work fine um, not oh this was was this for red belt this may have been for red belt so we actually probably need to run this out out here somewhere I'd imagine uh, because copper and steel are a fairly common resource that go together so even even though we only need it for the one thing at this point uh, I think it's just a safe bet to put them on the same belt it won't really be a waste either way uh, so we're just going to underground this section of the bus and uh, actually need to pull this back just one space here uh, because if I had done it right here, this would then be the full belt. Now, granted, we already have half a belt, so that technically would have worked out uh, for now. But once we added steel to the rest of this belt, then we would have had a problem with the steel can be being on the whole belt and the copper trying to merge in correctly. So uh, if we move this backwards one, we can bring this down. And I think uh, I'm probably am going to add a few more lines to the bus, but... We'll go ahead and do that and pull that back there. So we now have the steel on one part of this and then the copper we need to bring over. Actually, we have very, oof, we have very, very little copper. So this is probably going to be our next task. Now, I do like, I, I am trying uh, very hard, in fact, uh, harder than I normally do to plan things out for episodes. So, you know, we have a pretty clear track and idea of where we're going uh, with things here. Uh, but sometimes, and this will obviously occur in your factories too, so I think it's actually kind of important running into this, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you have a plan going forward and that plan gets postponed or interrupted uh, due to uh, issues that just pop up like this. So uh, that's something we need to fix, I would say, pretty much immediately. I, I do want to turn this on, otherwise uh, I'm going to get very sidetracked. So we need to deal with that. It's diverting a little bit, unfortunately, from the plan we had. But uh, I think, speaking of diverting from the plan, I'm changing this plan a little bit. Uh, but it is important that we deal with that. So I'm going to bring this here. It's probably going to interfere with some stuff over here a little bit. But we'll, we'll deal with that as the time comes. We can't quite know exactly what's going to be here. You know, again, leaving enough space is important. I have left enough space for assemblers here. It's a matter of if we need to underground or reroute this a little bit. Uh, so this is now creating these obviously this would be cranking these out at a very quick pace if we had copper uh, so we're going to do this uh, we could use a wire condition uh, but again since these are not actually used in anything else there's no need that we're ever going to need to do a setup like this so we can simply just cap this it's a lot quicker 50 of them should be sufficient at least for now and let's go ahead and see what the problem is with our copper. My guess is probably a lack of mining. This seems uh, a bit of a sudden uh, occurrence, which is kind of interesting. But uh, we also have an inventory full of stuff. Our inventory is actually full. This is a very common occurrence as well in my playthroughs. Uh, but we can quickly, quickly clear this out if you run into this type of issue. Uh, you can just, you know, take things with which your, your factory actually uses. So in this case, like iron ore, just control click it into furnaces. Same with this. I'm actually gonna control right click to put half in every furnace, just to spread it out a little more evenly here. Uh, I would like to keep a little coal in my inventory. I always feel like that's a good option uh, just because, you know, m maybe I wanna throw down a vehicle or something. Ah, okay, yeah, see, this is what threw me a little bit is my initial guess I said was uh, it's actually a mining issue, uh, but then, you know, you heard I kind of questioned that guess, and I was like, but it seems to be a very sudden occurrence. Uh, and what happened is we had actually created a bit of a, uh, what we call a belt buffer, uh, where we didn't really need much copper at all for quite a while. And uh, so, so these furnaces had just worked and worked and built up, you know, we weren't really using copper, so the line backed up all the way down, much as it kind of has here and uh, although this is being eaten uh, it backed all the way up and it seemed as if we had enough copper production when in reality 
we don't have near enough copper production and as soon as we turned some higher consuming things on or, or just everything turned on at once uh, we consumed our buffer our backlog if you will and uh, re in it, in it consumed it and now this is actually our true production rate which is nowhere near enough so uh, that is something to watch out for uh, there are a lot of I shouldn't say there are a lot there are uh, definitely setups I don't know I would say maybe not as common now but there are setups uh, in smelters that the people use especially newer players because uh, you don't really know any better and I did the same thing uh, and again I really I want to try to not tell you how to play this is more simply uh, in a just piece of advice uh, rather than me saying you should or shouldn't you know do something in hard hard terms uh, but uh, let's use up the rest of these small power poles here uh, there are setups where uh, people will have their smelters um, smelt things and then have the completed plates go into a buffer system that uh, just very quickly looks I'm gonna ghost these just so I don't have to pick them back up again that looks something kind of like this uh, in, in so then this belt would like in there and then they like do this and then have these belts come out and merge right and this can be really nice uh, in some cases but then the problem this creates is a problem we experience is this actually creates a false sense of security uh, as we literally just experienced here on our belt uh, because you build up all this while you aren't consuming much but then when you actually have your your true consumption or just add consumption uh, you know to, to what you had when you initially set this up uh, past that point then it it kind of just runs out and then you you actually don't have near enough production for what you need uh, and this is you know easily fixed in that scenario however what's not as easily fixed is when a similar situation happens where instead of your smelting production not being enough your mines actually start running out uh, where, where you still build up a buffer while your mind is still going fully uh, and, and then you turn on all your production or just add more and the buffers run out uh, and kind of at the same time your miners have started running out but you didn't really notice because there was a buffer and uh, then they run out and you're like oh no I have no resources and it's it's obviously a lot harder to add uh, go find another mine and, and set that all up and bring the resources in it's a lot harder to do that than it is to just add some smelters and such here so uh, again uh, I, I very much don't want to say don't do this it's just a piece of advice that I've experienced and that you know I've kind of seen some other people have trouble with uh, so maybe just keep that in mind if you do want to build a buffer uh, just have that in the back of your mind that 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 is something that can happen uh, and, and just you know maybe keep a close eye on it closer than you would normally uh, so we have expanded this of course now we do run into the issue where we don't have enough miners uh, now our, our patch itself has not run out so this is uh, an easily fixed situation just because it's just a lack of miners not a lack of uh, uh, available resource I should say so this here this is actually not this is just our spear Sorry there, guys. You uh, you heard me cut out. I was on the verge of sneezing and tried to get out one last word before sneezing while I muted my microphone. That is a very rare occurrence on a video. Uh, I apologize, not very professional, but sneezes just will sneak up on you like that. And uh, at least I have a mute button on my microphone. Otherwise, that would have been bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine this. Again, we'll use splitters as a combining tool here rather than splitting tool and uh, just use these up I, I did make more so I, I suppose I kind of contradicted what I had said but I don't have the ability well I had the ability I don't have the patience to make a lot of those uh, so that should be good we, we added probably what was that eight or ten more miners that should get us going here decently uh, we are continuing our advanced material processing I would imagine that uh, we yeah we just don't have enough laboratories to really meet the demand here uh, we could speed it up although there is quite a few uh, you know prerequisites in, in terms of actual production we need to do before we could even uh, attempt purple science so that's something we, we can probably actually work on right now let's just check really quickly 
uh, if there is any combat needs to be done. Uh, very shortly there will be once our pollution hits these bases here. Uh, but I don't see any new bases occurring. Uh, this is just the radar revealing things. Um, there's, there's no new bases, no pollution, you know, uh, sections being, you know, reappearing and disappearing as if something was there. There's nothing really in a vicinity here. We did find some more coal, though. We did find another very, very nice oil patch, 3,400. This guy is 3,600, though, even better. Uh, lots of coal, some iron, some copper, thankfully. Uh, there's no stone yet in the visible... Well, this, I don't really count this. We can fit very, very few miners on this, unfortunately. Uh, it's actually quite rich, though, uh, when you consider the size for how much it gives. But we'll just let the radars continue what they're doing. They'll eventually find some, or if worst case scenario, we need to go out and, and search for some ourselves. That is totally fine as well. Sometimes that is just something you have to do. Uh, okay, so I should have dumped this copper off, but I think we can safely work on some stuff for purple science so we can actually look ahead here we're actually a little bit ahead of the curve uh, surprisingly so if we go into here and look at the research we can see what it gives us and then we can look at that item and see what is needed for it so for this we need that this gets a this is a doozy uh, we need productivity modules electric furnaces and 30 rails 30 train tracks for this it is very very high demand of train tracks and it can be quite difficult to keep up with that demand uh, both just material wise like supplying the things to make the rails and the rails and actually actual throughput of getting those 30 rails uh, per pack craft to them uh, it's a lot uh, now they do take 21 seconds and there they actually give us three uh, we've had some science packs that give us one and we've had some science packs that give us two. Uh, this one actually gives us three, interestingly. And luckily, figuring out with base craft rate the amount of machines we need is quite simple because it's a very easy division. We know these take 21 seconds, and we want uh, one a second just overall. Uh, if, if it only gave us one per craft, we would need 21 machines. However, it gives us three per craft, and three very nicely goes into 21, being seven times. Uh, so we need seven of these machines. And I think it is about time that we start making our next level assembling machines here. We haven't really used them yet. And they're not much different aside from the fact that they are just faster. Uh, like I think I've mentioned before, they are 50% faster. These having a speed of 0.5 and these having a speed of 0.75, uh, which is decent it's still slower than our player crafts but it is 50 percent faster than this they of course consume uh, some more electricity but interestingly they actually pollute less um three a minute opposed to four minutes so that's quite good as well uh we don't have to we, we could easily make uh the things we need in in, in these assembling machines but uh, these are just faster now quite a while ago uh, there was a time, and this is just some factorial history for you as I set these up. There was a time where uh, the amount of in ingredients that a machine could take and craft with was limited by the quality of the machine. So to phrase that perhaps in a better way is uh, that each machine, so like your level one machine could only make items that used, I think, two ingredients. Uh, and then this one could do like three to five, I want to say. And then the level three could do like five plus. Uh, so you ended up in a very weird situation. I remember for a very long time, there was a situation where with green science, uh, you, you had to, uh, you, you could use these level one machines for the green science itself in the belt, but you actually had to research and then make one assembly machine two to craft your inserters because they required three input three ingredients uh, which was very interesting uh, and then later on you had to use level three machines to make uh, I think it was oil refineries if you wanted to make those in a machine or or anything else with like five plus ingredients uh, I think I, I I don't know if the numbers are correct I know correct I know the numbers were correct for this one uh, and then the minimum of this one because I do very distinctly remember having to 
uh, get that one blue, that, that one level 2 machine just to make inserters. So, pretty interesting. Uh, these are going to be our purple packs. We don't have the recipe unlocked yet, so we can't set that. Uh, but we do generally know how this will go. It does need two inputs because it needs those three ingredients and an output here. Of course, leaving uh, some extra space. Uh, in fact, not as much as I had initially thought, seeing as this belt will go here. Perhaps we should just run that like that. Uh, and I'm actually rethinking. So this is some this is something I try to avoid doing, uh, but I do actually want to tear this up because... Uh, realizing we're going to need to turn this copper and bring it outwards a bit uh, for this particular setup. There are other ways to do it, but we'll just follow what we have going on here. Uh, that didn't leave as much space as I had actually hoped, so we actually know there's going to be another belt here. Again, holding shift while uh, placing things makes it go. It's very, very nice, easy, uh, non-committal, I suppose, way to uh, do things because uh, it just it allows you to just easily get rid of it. Uh, and not even need the materials to put it there. So we have that, and then let's just add another oops, another input right here. And that just adds, you know, it's an extra space. It's not, it's one space more, but just having that extra space is kind of just an amount that I, f I feel much more comfortable with. Uh, so we can, we can actually make though, the first thing it needs, which is modules. And then we can make here very shortly once this finishes, the furnaces, which will be right there, uh, the modules, I don't know why I keep going to this tab. Uh, the modules are very simple. Actually, extremely simple. They're expensive, but they're simple. Uh, they just require green circuits, which of course we've had going for quite a while now, and red circuits, which we have just recently set up. Uh, granted, they are not uh, you know, working very well uh, due to a lack of circuits, so that may be something we need to fix here very shortly. Uh, and this I am just belting over here, but this actually needs to be changed up a bit because this does of course need to go on, on the bus. Uh, I'm not sure if we had dedicated lines for this yet. I don't think we have. Uh, we haven't actually. Uh, they could go over here though. We have a we have a free line. This is already four. We have a free line over here. Uh, and I know this is jumping around a little bit. I do apologize. Like I said, sometimes you have a plan, and sometimes those plans go awry due to other things that pop up, or uh, or in addition to, in this case, uh, me wanting to show you something that I think is very useful and a very appropriate time to show this. So uh, let's let's just quickly add some green circuit production. But what I want to show you is a way to kind of keep straight, if you will, what you want planned on your bus. Uh, as you saw, I was looking around, I was, you know, wondering if we had a line line planned, and I was like looking to see what's going where, and it's a little bit difficult to keep track of, of what's going where exactly, and uh, there is a, a very nice way, in my opinion, to keep track of that once you have the circuit network made with these constant combinators, uh, but we'll just very quickly get this set up here like this. These are actually going the wrong direction, just hit R to rotate those. And we're just going to copy this setup exactly as we've done over there. And I think I will use some medium power pulls here. They are much better for this setup because you can just place one right in here and it will power everything. And this guy just needs to extend right there. And this should be good. Our power is not doing well at all. Uh, we are running into some issues. Uh, and again, though, the important thing is to not panic. Now we may actually completely run out of power, and while that's not great, it is something that can be fixed. And if I didn't do that, I would have likely forgotten. Uh, so we have no coal again. I believe we've experienced this issue at least once already. And this is something that I think maybe we need to try to future-proof a little better here. Again, this is another reason I like to keep some coal in my inventory for situations like this. I'm actually wishing we had kept a little more in our inventory. Uh, let's just put those there. Uh, so the issue here is I just had not really dedicated enough coal to this. Uh, seeing as one of our miners just completely ran out there, we could put. Uh, this is a mixed patch, and uh, while I do want to show you how to deal with that, it's not super difficult. Uh, I don't really have time at this point. I do want to get our power back online. 
So I just moved those power poles so we could get this in the correct distance spacing here. So let's just get these. Now, unfortunately, we're in a bit of an issue where this doesn't actually work uh, to fit those. So we're going to have to scooch these out. But adding these miners should be sufficient here. Uh, let's just move these. So it's fine. Our power is out. Again, no need to panic, guys. No need to panic. We just, you know, you just stay calm when you run into this type of situation. And uh, again, a very good example of why I think keeping coal in your inventory is uh, really, really good. Now, you'll notice all of these are actually running. However, our power is not looking great. Uh, and uh, what that indicates to me is I actually expanded a little bit beyond the, the means of which we could supply power. And that's common. You know, sometimes you get so... Uh, you know, enthralled in your in your factory and your building that it's very easy, at least for me, to, you know, kind of just become consumed with what you're building and not, you know, not not really realize that you maybe have built past what your power can supply. So uh, we'll get these, and I think while we're at it, we'll just move this. Uh, but I do want to, at the very least, show you what I was going to show you on the on the main bus there. So. Let's just get, I think we're actually going to get a couple more of these added here. I really don't want power to conk out like that again. Uh, and I think this was perhaps a bit overkill uh, in regards to the amount of miners we had here. Anyway, let's just clear that out there. Clear that out there. We can use these power poles. We can just place right on top there again like that. And bring this out here. Whoop. There we go. And that should catch up in supply. Now, we are uh, still very much actually not able to keep up with our demand here. It seems I expanded significantly past what our power could do, which is quite unfortunate. Use the last bit of our iron for this. Once research turns off, we will be in a much better position, uh, but... Definitely need to do this. Okay, so while we're over here, though, I want to show you uh, what I was referring to for marking out your bus. Uh, so these lines that are already, uh, you know, filled, we really don't have to worry about. We obviously already know what's there. However, for future lines, like uh, this one, for example, well, this one's actually already filled with uh, sulfur, uh, but for red circuits... And stuff like that. So we know there's two uh, plastic here, and then red circuits can go after that, and then maybe mm, perhaps blue circuits after that. So uh, we have that. What we can do is we can place these down here. And I could place them over here where the resources are, but usually it's instinctively, at least for me, to look at the start of my bus or near the start. Uh, so we place these down here, and these, you'll notice, are lined up where the belts would go. And we can go in here and set these signals. So I don't think I actually showed you the combinators yet. These are the simplest of, of all the combinators by far. Uh, your, your output is as simple as on and off. And these just output solid signals uh, and numbers of those signals. So uh, what we can do, though, is we can use these as very nice markers for what will go on these lines. Uh, so we can go in here, and you can select every any item in the entire game that, that can be built. And even if you don't have it unlocked, select this can select a number uh, when actually working with the circuit network this will definitely come into play in this case it really doesn't matter uh, and we'll just do this and there we go and this is now very easy to tell when you have the alt info on the alt key or whatever you may have set it to alt by default uh, that, that this is copper and we can copy and paste these settings just like anything else uh, and then this one we can set to red circuits also, you can hit enter here instead of hitting the check mark, which is a bit faster. Uh, a lot faster, in fact. And there we go. So now, uh, and in fact, I could even, if I want to clarify it even more, I could do that. So now, when I'm looking around to see, you know, by the time I get blue circuits, I forget where they should go. I can just look over here and say, oh, okay, well, they line up here and they go next to red circuits. Easy. Uh, also, you can do this uh, exact same thing with filter inserters is something else to mention. Uh, they have the exact same, although smaller, type of filter selection here. While they don't output numbers or anything like that, uh, you can just 
Obviously, that's the wrong thing if we want to match it. You can do this. And uh, the only difference, though, is that these require power. So unless you want these constantly flashing no power, um, the, the combinators are a bit cleaner, in my opinion. Uh, but you can do the same with filter inserters if you so choose. And let's go over and fix power. I am going to leave those there because that is actually where those things go. And it will help me in the future. Uh, yeah, so now that research is done, our power is better, but actually still a little bit on the edge. Let's go ahead and just add in one more section here. We will have to move this or just expand elsewhere because uh, we've obviously about hit a limit here. In fact, even this will be kind of in the way of another steel section once we get to that point. This should last us a little bit though, and those extra miners we added to coal should be pretty good. And we did finally finish the production science. So let's go set those recipes in those assemblers. Uh, we did set up green circuits here, which are working at full speed. Uh, the belt is now backed up. You'll see the copper belt is now backed up. The red circuits are struggling there a little bit. We really do need to add that extra side of it, how it properly should be set up. And we'll just copy these guys here. Uh, I actually don't need this many. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some people were probably yelling at me in uh, out loud or, or in their heads or in the comments. Uh, but we did fix this, so we do need seven of these. And I think just as perhaps a final thing here for this episode, we can set this all up for this. Unfortunately, this does not line up quite right because it's an odd number with the inserters there, but that's okay. Uh, I could put them in the middle. In fact, I think I will put them in the middle because it does bug me a little bit. Okay, easy as that. And we'll get these placed down. And then next episode, I'm actually quite confident that next episode, uh, we should be able to finish everything for this. I, I am quite confident that we should be able to finish the productivity module build, the electric furnace build, as well as the uh, build for the rails, which is going to be pretty interesting. It's I think I have a bit of an idea of, of how we might do this. It's, it's something I worked on on my stream today, another playthrough. Uh, it's going to actually be a little bit similar to Green Circuit, so that should be pretty interesting. Uh, but there we go. I think I think this is, uh, you know, not quite as much as I wanted to get done. Unfortunately, we had a lot of uh, distractions that popped up. But like I said, that, uh, that'll that happen in your game too, I'm quite sure. So, uh, you know, maybe it was, it was good to show that. And uh, in future episodes, I'll try to be a little better prepared, although some of those things I, I couldn't have really anticipated too well, uh, I suppose. Uh, or, or maybe I could have, but uh, at least at least you got to see it once and maybe it'll just help you feel better uh, about things if, if that happens in your playthroughs uh, so there we go purple science is all ready to go i think off camera i'm probably going to add just the other side of this i don't think there's much need to show it. it's just an exact copy of this except on the other side and then uh yeah we will work on the three materials needed for this and next episode we should have blue si or uh, purple science sorry complete and i want to say folks this is a uh, quite a quite a good bit of progress we're making in this playthrough uh, th this is actually the second to last science you can craft uh, there are two more sciences after this however one uh, you you don't actually make in assemblers I don't want to spoil things too much uh, but uh, this is the second to last science you actually make in assemblers so we are making very good progress now don't worry you know, it's not like the series is close to over. It's not like we're close to beating the game. There is quite a bit after this, but in terms of science itself, uh, getting purple science done is is pretty decently uh, uh, far in. So we've made it. We've made it pretty far here. There's definitely some expansion that needs to happen. Uh, of course, we need to make batteries and such in oil. Expand our hub a little bit, and definitely power, and get some outposts. There, of course, probably several episodes dedicated to trains. Uh, which hopefully should be enjoyable and informative, but I believe that will do it for this one guys Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it And uh, I do I meant to say at the beginning, but I apologize for this one being kind of late in the only episode out today I, I had some uh, real life issues our uh, air conditioning went out and, and main, uh, maintenance guys were here working on it Which made it very difficult to record or anything. So uh, That's what happened today, but it should be fixed for now and I should be good to go um, But yeah, just want to throw that out there. Sorry about just the, the long wait in one episode. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did, a like is much appreciated. So, of course, other people can find this and uh, find it helpful as well. And if you're new to the game, uh, I hope you're having a fantastic time with it and enjoying this series and any other content you find. And if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome and feel free to subscribe if you aren't already to keep up with all the content that is coming out. And uh, I believe that'll do it. If you have any thoughts or questions, leave them below and I will do my very best to answer. And next episode we will be getting a lot done and finish out purple science i believe so lots to look forward to there guys thank you so much and until next time i look forward to seeing you all and do take care